I'm Steve Everett, Applications Engineer for Tektronix at Keithley, and today I'll be showing off one of our new combo products in partnership with Test Equity. This Test Equity Temperature Chamber Test System shows how our Keithley DAQ6510 Data Acquisition and Logging Multimeter System can both control a Watlo F4T temperature controller to operate a Test Equity Temperature Chamber over a set of program temperatures and then scan a group of devices under test while controlling a power supply to stimulate those devices all in the convenience of a rolling cart form factor. Okay, so we're going to get started by hitting the No Script button at the top of the instrument and selecting the Test Equity Demo. Uh, this will start the script automatically and begin communication between the temperature controller, the power supply, and the DAQ6510. As you can see now, it is receiving data back and forth between that temperature controller to figure out what temperature the temperature chamber is at. And once it reaches its set point, that's when it begins to initiate the first set of scans. Here, we're going to be able to see that you can view stats on each channel as the scan is going. Uh, and you can see those stats include peak to peak, average, standard deviation, maximum, minimum, as well as number of readings. And you can scroll between the channels as you wish uh, to, get, uh, to get a look at that as the test is going. Okay, so now that the, uh, the scans have been completed, it's going to change to a new set point, now 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the DAQ6510 is going to wait again until we get to within about a degree Celsius of that set point, and then it's going to initiate the next set of scans. Uh, it should also be noted that during this time when it changes each set point, it's also changing the value on the power supply that you see in the bottom left there, um, upping the voltage as the temperature goes up. Uh, now here we're going to see a, a view of the reading table uh, which is a great way to look at your data uh, in its entirety. Uh, as you can see, uh, you can choose the active buffer, and then you have both a waveform as well as a full table. Uh, both of those are completely scrollable, so you can scroll up and down on the reading table, as well as scroll left and right on that waveform uh, to get to exactly the data that you want to see. So if you see something a little strange on that waveform, you can scroll right over to it and, and find the exact data point with timestamp, reading, and channel number. All right, now we're moving on to the next set point. Uh, again, the DAQ6510 has sent the command over to the power supply to up the voltage, this time to 7.5 volts. And uh, again, once we get up to the set point for the chamber, uh, we'll initiate our next set of scans. All right, here we're going to be taking a look at the histogram view, uh, which is another feature of the DAQ6510. Uh, it will essentially live bin all of the data uh, so that you can get sort of an idea of where each of the data points is lying uh, in relation to each other. Um, you will be able to do this on a per channel basis. Um, so if there's one channel in particular that you, uh, you want to see this data for, you can choose that as the active channel and watch as that histogram sort of actively bins. All right, now we're coming up on our final set point for this demo. Uh, in this case, uh, 36 degrees. So once we get up to uh, above 35, we'll get it started. Again, to take note that the DAQ6510 has up to the voltage on that power supply once more to 10 volts this time. And so here we're going to see the limits and alarms function that the DAQ6510 has. So you'll see, uh, I'll, I'll have a close up in here, that each time that the uh, scanned value goes above whatever limit you set, it will highlight a point on the status bar as being yellow rather than green. Uh, it will also give you a little error message um, down there. Uh, for example, it says uh, over high one on load one at you know what, whatever time. Um, and that will continuously update to the latest alarm that has been tripped. Uh, so you can get sort of an active view of what's going on in your scan as a whole uh, while it's going. All 
All right, so now we're going to take a look at the graphing capabilities of the DAQ6510. Uh, as it says there, you can view up to 20 channels in one chart. Uh, you also get individual control of each channel uh, with pinch and zoom, and you can use the cursors functionality, which I attempted to show there, but <laughs> the script wanted to do something else. All right, so here's the script, uh, the uh, cursor functionality. You can do vertical script, uh, vertical cursors, excuse me, uh, that you can set using your finger. You can also switch that to horizontal cursors if you choose. Or finally, you could do both horizontal and vertical, and you will get that data uh, underneath the graph, as you can see in the green down there. Uh, the graph is also fully pinch and zoom compatible. Uh, so you can change the scales on the X and Y as well as move it left, right, up and down. Uh, you can also move each channel up and down uh, so that you can get you know, the best uh, possible reference for each, for each channel against each other.